The System of Dr. Tarr and Professor Feather by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Reading by Greg Marguerite. The System of Dr. Tarr and Professor Feather by Edgar Allan Poe. During the autumn of 1845, while on tour through the extreme southern provinces of France, my route led me within a few miles of a certain Maison de Santé, or private madhouse, about which I had heard much in Paris from my medical friends. As I had never visited a place of the kind, I thought the opportunity too good to be lost, and so proposed to my traveling companion, a gentleman with whom I had made casual acquaintance a few days before, that we should turn aside for an hour or so and look through the establishment. To this he objected, pleading haste in the first place, and in the second a very usual horror at the sight of a lunatic. He begged me, however, not to let any mere courtesy towards himself interfere with the gratification of my curiosity, and said that he would ride on leisurely so that I might overtake him during the day or at all events during the next. As he bade me good-bye, I bethought me that there might be some difficulty in obtaining access to the premises, and mentioned my fears on this point. He replied that, in fact, unless I had personal knowledge of the superintendent, Monsieur Mallard, or some credential in the way of a letter, a difficulty might be found to exist, as the regulations of these private madhouses were more rigid than the public hospital laws. For himself, he added, he had some years since made the acquaintance of Mallard, and would so far assist me as to ride up to the door and introduce me, although his feelings on the subject of lunacy would not permit of his entering the house. I thanked him, and turning from the main road we entered a grass-grown by-path, which in half an hour nearly lost itself in a dense forest, clothing the base of a mountain. Through this dark and gloomy wood we rode some two miles, when the Maison de Santé came in view. It was a fantastic chateau, much dilapidated, and, indeed, scarcely tenantable through age and neglect. Its aspect inspired me with absolute dread, and, checking my horse, I half resolved to turn back. I soon, however, grew ashamed of my weakness and proceeded. As we rode up to the gateway I perceived it slightly open, and the visage of a man peering through. In an instant afterward this man came forth, accosted my companion by name, shook him cordially by the hand, and begged him to alight. It was Monsieur Mallard himself. He was a portly, fine-looking gentleman of the old school, with a polished— Sample complete. Ready to continue?